personal father is not your human dad. Your personal father is your creator. He made you and put the spirit of his only son inside you. That's the light that lightens every man that comes into the world. It's the good that you feel rising inside yourself at times. Please uh, watch the first six segments of this series so that you can see the intellectual basis and history of what we're seeing. You, of course, like the rest of us, have used your freedom to keep the Spirit of God within you dumped down so that you could live independent of your Maker. We've all done this. But it's made us utterly dependent on the world. Uh, it's things for our security, it's circumstances for our happiness, and other people for our sense of significance or our uh, celebrity status. We therefore have found that our personalities become corrupted so that we can't do the good that we want but repeatedly do the things that we know we shouldn't. Our maker knew this would happen. But he didn't want robots who loved him just because they had to. He wanted dear children who could love him because he loved them. This meant he had to experience inside, inside himself the worst that they choose to do and to be. Not only had they to see and experience what he was not, but he himself had to bear that inside them. This meant his own death. It meant experiencing all that he himself was not. And if we were to have the chance to actually live and love with him, it meant his eventually making us over again what he wanted us to be after we had experienced life without him. This is our situation in this world. It's life without our maker. Life mutilated and corrupted by a humanity that lives off the creation rather than the creator. Our maker subjected the creation to futility through our abuse of nature and each other so that we would see and experience firsthand the death that existed outside him. Just think yourself, uh, think for a moment, how would you make other living beings who could love you freely because they wanted to and not because they had to? How would you give them the opportunity to really choose you freely? if there was no other existence outside you. Even more than that, how would you keep them alive if there was no other life than yours? And how could you bear the pain of death that would be inflicted upon you if you stayed with them each moment as they lived in the midst of the death that exists outside you? Then imagine what it would be like if their existence continued only because they were part of your only son, and it was him who bore their destruction to shield them from extinction. The present world is what life is like without our dear father, except that it's ameliorated and made bearable at times by the life of his son's spirit, which continues the moderating effect of him himself. Wherever this is accepted or exercised without coercing our human wills, our Creator is able to restrain the devastation wrought by our autonomous lives, as he does in people like St. Teresa. Thus our present world is subjected to futility so that we can see what life would be like without God as against the life of his Son manifested from time to time. Far from being a perfect world, this is planned by our Creator to be a graphic picture of the kind of world that our autonomy produces, so that we personally can see the difference between just a knowledge of good and evil and the life of his own nature within us. By living in such a world, we see how our own personality has warped and corrupted by the environment we create. So 
And when we try to live independent of his life and love by getting the life and love of the world itself, we discover that our nature becomes so corrupt that we cannot depend on him, even when we want to. So how can you be freed from your dependence on things for your security and circumstances for your happiness and other people for your sense of significance? Let's talk about that tomorrow.